now. If the box is now placed on an inclined plane of inclination theta, what will be the normal force on the box? We talked about it in the beginning. You know, when an object is placed on an inclined plane, its weight mg will be acting vertically down. That mg is no longer the normal force. The normal force or the force pressing the two surfaces will now be mg cos theta. That is the normal force now. So only that force comes into play when you talk about the friction between these two surfaces. The weight of the box mg acts vertically down. There you are, that is mg. And the component of mg pulling the box down the plane is mg sin theta. mg sin theta pulls the box down the plane. And the component of mg pressing the two surfaces together is mg cos theta. And this is the normal force. The normal force between the two surfaces Fn equal to mg cos theta. So wherever we use Fn so far, we need to replace that Fn by mg cos theta. All right. That means the equation for the force static friction in the case of an inclined plane becomes mu s equal to mu s fn and that fn in this case now is mg cos theta. So you must be able to now distinguish here the force of static friction between two surfaces that are inclined at an angle theta to the horizontal is mu s mg cos theta. There you are. Fs is mu s mg cos theta and it is this force that will oppose the motion. Now, this is something that you must be able to recall in solving problems. What does mu s mg cos theta represent? The force of static friction between two surfaces that are inclined at an angle theta with the horizontal. If you now want to move this object up, well, remember, the frictional force always opposes motion. If the object is trying to move down, the frictional force will be acting up. If you want to pull the object up the inclined plane, what will be the direction in which that frictional force will be acting? It will be acting downward because friction always opposes motion. Well, if the block is now moving on the inclined plane, the, the force of friction will no longer be the, be the force of static friction, it will be the force of kinetic friction. And Fk equal to mu k mg cos theta. Well, mg sin theta pulls the box down the plane and fs equal to mu s mg cos theta opposes it. Now, what happens when you increase the angle of inclination? Well, will fs increase? No, fs, the force of static friction, will not increase, will it? This, that's the limiting force. But as theta increases, mg sin theta will increase. And a time will come that a particular angle that mg sin theta will be exactly equal to fs, which is mu mg cos theta. And at that time, there will be no net force on the box. That means the box can either move the, the box can now move without an acceleration. If the inclination theta is increased gradually, mg sine theta increases 
and for a certain angle mg sine theta will be that is the force acting down the plane will be exactly equal to mu s mg cos theta now can you use these equations to obtain an expression for mu s the coefficient of static friction you can see mg and mg will cancel from either side and if you divide now both sides by cos theta look at this mu s equal to mg sine theta divided by mg cos theta mg and mg will go sine theta divided by cos theta is tan theta that's right so if you want to find the coefficient of static friction between the two surfaces what all you need to do is keep on increasing the angle of inclination until the block just begins to break loose that means the downward force just balances the frictional force opposing motion and at that particular angle this is the condition at that particular angle mg sine theta will be equal to mu s mg cos theta and then at that particular angle mu s will be equal to tan theta well that is a very important concept so under this condition there is no net force acting on that block well let's see if I can show that to you well here I have now that block of wood on an inclined plane and watch as I increase the angle of inclination <clears throat> now tell me what are the forces now the weight mg will be acting vertically down and what is the normal force pressing the two surfaces together that will be mg cos theta and what is the force pulling the block down the plane will be mg sin theta now <clears throat> At the moment, mg sine theta is not sufficient to overcome the friction. But you can see as I increase the angle of inclination, there you are. It just begins to break loose. There you are. Yes. That means this angle, at this particular angle, the mg sine theta acting down the plane will be equal to the frictional force. What is the frictional force of the plane? Fs is mu s mg cos theta and at this particular instant those two forces are balanced. That means if I can now measure this angle which I can measure here it is actually 15 degrees. So the coefficient of static friction between this block and the inclined plane is tan of 15 degrees and tangent of 15 degrees is 0.26 I think yes approximately 0.26 the coefficient of friction between these two surfaces is 0.6 now let me ask you if I now keep some weights on this will the angle change will the angle at which the forces are balanced change let's try well that is 12 degrees 13 degrees 14 degrees well 15 degrees it begins to move in other words the amount of weight on this will not affect it. Can you tell me why? Because when we wrote down the equation, do you remember we cancelled mg on the numerator and mg on the denominator? In other words, the coefficient of friction between the two surfaces does not depend on the weight of the block. So, it only depends on the normal force. And you can see, as you increase the weight and the normal force will increase, 
but as the normal force increases the force pulling it down the plane will also increase the ratio will remain a constant okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this part of the lesson here we are going to use all these concepts we developed in the next part you know how to solve problems alright I'll see you for that in a while